This program has been in part funded by Visit Cornwall. So we're back for a second series. My name is Shane Solomon. And my name is Mike Spinks. And here's what's coming up on this evening's show. We take a quick look back on what we got up to last season. We visit the historical site of Wheel Martin Clay Works. We take a look behind the scenes at St. Austell Brewery. And playing us out this evening, we have Backbeat Sound System for their track, Losing Faith. China Clay. And beer, what is there not to like about the history of our content tonight? I know, down at St Austell Brewery and over at Wheel Martin to get a bit of an inside look on what goes over there. Some great pieces, so keep an eye out for later on. Indeed, well, last season we were streaming on YouTube, we were on Sky TV, but this season you can catch us also on Freesat and Facebook Live via our Facebook page. Indeed, so we're premiering, so head over to Facebook, uh, you can catch it up on there. And as you mentioned, also on YouTube, great ways to catch up on Cornwall Channel. And with that being said, we do like to hear from every single one of our viewers who watch on all of our social media platforms. And you can find that on our website, Facebook page, Twitter, Instagram. You can find us, just search for Cornwall Channel. Indeed. So we had a great season last year. Uh, now we're into this new season, a new year. Uh, you got any New Year's resolutions? I've got no New Year's resolutions because I'm useless at keeping them. So mm. I just kind of go through the year thinking if I want to stop something, I'll do it then. I don't need the Fair hype enough. of January to, to do that. To do pressure you into it. What about you? Uh, I wanted to play a little bit more golf. I need to get a little bit better at it. Uh, so I'm going to try and get out once a month if I can do. It'd be great to hear some uh, places that you think is good to play in Cornwall. Maybe we can head out there. Maybe we cover that one week. It'd be quite good. A golfing feature. That'd there we go. Handy. Yeah, take a look about what's going on. There's loads of golf courses around here. So, um, Scores of that. Doing that. But yeah, so we had a we had a really good year, actually, a really good last season. We were all over the place, did a lot of cooking, um, a lot of music as well, uh, and some really good stuff. So this is a little look back on what we did last season. Like it, love it. That's what we're talking about. What a great way to look back at last season. I know, we had so much fun, didn't we? So much going on, all that food. Music. We've been around a bit. We did the dog walking. Dog walking. A bit of history in there, the choir. There's so much, again, in Cornwall that you can 
film and this is the thing and people getting in contact with us give us ideas mm -hmm. and they'll say why don't you go to this event why don't you go to that event and keep them coming in people keep those ideas coming in because we do you know act on them definitely and obviously now you're watching on youtube as well you can pop a comment below there uh, and also on facebook as well so if you're watching on facebook definitely pop a comment and below and we uh, we always read those uh, and yeah, we want to have another real busy season if we can do. Uh, it would be good if you can subscribe to our YouTube channel as well and we share really that around uh, that, and yeah. build that up to be something a little bit bigger. Indeed. Now, talking about history, we filmed a bit of history last year. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a great piece for you now at yep. the uh, Will Martin Clay Works. Indeed. So it looks behind the scenes over there. Have a look at this. So today then we've come down to the Will Martin Clay Works nestled in the heart of St. Austell. And behind me is the quite outstanding pit. It's still a working pit today. Let's have a look at the process of where the clay goes from here. So once the clay has been blasted in the pit by the water monitors, it starts making its way down here by natural gravity to the next stage of the plant. It's worthwhile knowing, of course, the color of the water here, which is obviously white from the clay, is aptly why they named the local shopping center White River Place. The slurry now consisted of china clay and water, and all the processes from now on are concerned with removing the water. The crib up, you've got to check this out. The crib up was a primitive works canteen and here the workmen came to eat their crib at meal breaks and warm their pasties on the small stove that's just inside and have their mug of tea. Now, the men employed here worked eight hours a day, six days a week. So now we're at the drags and clay and slurry from the pit first entered this works through the stoneware pipes at the far end of the concrete channels to sand drags on my left. As the slurry ran slowly through these drags, the sand dropped to the bottom. So there are five stone wall tanks here at Wilmar and which were filled and emptied in rotation with clay from the settling pits up the hill. The clay was left to settle until it was thick as clotted cream. When the clay settled, clear water was run off the surface through pinholes in the hatchboards at the back of the tank. It could take two or three months for the clay to reach about 30 to 40 percent solids. At that time the hatchboards were removed and some clay ran through into the pan or kiln behind. To move most of the clay rails were put down in the tank and a small muck wagon was brought out from the pan kiln. So this is the pan kiln, which was known locally back in the day as the dry. And behind me and below me is the coal shed. At the opposite end of the kiln was a tall chimney and it's still there, like a stack, which sucked the hot gases from the fireplace along the flues under the floor. Parts of the flue system are exposed for you to see. So this is the 18-foot water wheel. How impressive is this? This water wheel was used for pumping clay slurry around the works, and you can see the pump it powers just in front of me here. And to my left is the balance box. It's needed to help the wheel to keep turning when the pump is lifting. You will notice that this wheel works a system of flat rods and cables transmitting the movement created by the wheel to the pump. It was erected on this site in 1902 and restored in 1976. Water wheels were a common sight in the area a hundred years ago. Nikita, thank you very much for allowing us access here today. A fascinating look at the clay works in the museum. So when did it transition from a working pit into what is now a museum? 
Um, so Will Martin is the world's only China clay museum. It was formed in 1974, um, but what you can see today is how it would have looked between the 1820s and 1960s. When can people visit you? So we're open seven days a week, um, in summer 10 to 5 and in winter 10 to 4. And there's some areas obviously that we haven't shown today that uh, it's going to be a great interest in people coming down. What else can they see like behind us for example, what's in here? So we've got the Discovery Centre where you can learn more about the social history of China Clay, so the people who used to work and live here. Um, we've also got um, fantastic woodland walks which is great for exploring with your dog and we've also got play areas and children's activities as well. Well, superb. Well, if you haven't had a chance to come down here yet, make sure you do. And uh, I know that a lot of my family have worked in the clay industry, so it's great to get a behind-the-scenes look of uh, how things were done. So uh, thank you very much great. indeed. Thank you very much. Well, if you've not had the chance to go down to see Will Martin Clayworks, make sure you get down there. It's a fantastic tour down there, isn't it? It was. We got all the way up to the top, as you saw, went to go and see the pits, uh, and even just finding out how all that happened, because I never even thought about it. I mean, obviously, there's a lot of it that goes around in Cornwall, and I've, I've never even looked before. And back in the day, you know, everyone who lived in Cornwall would pretty much have someone, or certainly mid-Cornwall, would have someone who worked for mm. the Clayworks, and when they left school, that's what they did. Well, you had you know? family that even up but to My recently. stepdad's worked there, a lot of my uncles have worked at um, uh, ECLP, mm -hmm. and which is now Emirates, and still a few friends that work there now, but it's nowhere near the employer that it used to be back in the day. So, full of history there, and um, to find out what all the uses of clay is used for as well. There's so much more to it than what we had Indeed. in that feature clip. So, we're coming up for an ad break now, so we'll be back in a bit. <laughs> From the installation of boilers to the repair of central heating systems, we have the experience and expertise to handle it all. We offer a complete range of boiler installation, servicing, maintenance and repair services, along with a 24-7 breakdown service at reasonable prices. All our heating experts are gas safe and Ofttech registered. If your fuel is gas, oil or LPG, we can help. Call us today to find out more or visit www.rapidheatingsw.co.uk. Treat your senses to the finest flavours of South Korean and Asian at Zen Noodle and Wine Bar in the centre of Truro. Zen is a great contemporary place to dine, delivering modern Asian fusion cuisine, all cooked fresh to order with no MSG. Authentic South Korean barbecue grills at selected tables. Truro's hidden gem, the Zen of Zen. At Cornish Gems, we have over 180 luxury holiday cottages across Cornwall, ready for you to fall in love with. All of our beautiful self-catering homes are hand-picked by our local team and meet the highest quality cleanliness and safety standards, so you can relax and enjoy your dream holiday in Cornwall. Whether you want to visit the famous harbour town of St Ives, or explore the long sandy beaches of Newquay, at Cornish Gems we have a gem waiting for you. Visit our website to view our tempting collections, or call our local travel advisors today. Are you missing calls? 75% of people don't like leaving answer phone messages. What opportunities could you be missing out on in your business? Fonetta Business offers a solution with its telephone answering service. Our dedicated business team answer your calls as your business and can text or email you straight away. From as little as £1 per call, can you afford to miss your next customer? Contact us to try our 14-day free trial now. Fonetta. Communication made easy. Since 1994, independent estate agent Jackie Stanley and her team have been looking after property owners and buyers from the Harbourside office in Padstow. Covering a whole of North Cornwall, it's important to Jackie that great care and attention is paid to all clients, and that herself and her staff go the extra mile to achieve satisfaction for her buyers and sellers alike. Honesty, integrity and discretion are key in our outstanding sales record. Visit Jackie Stanley online or pop in and see her in Padstow. 
For great food, friendly accommodation and delicious local ales, come to the Griffin Inn in Newquay. Our Cornish restaurant and bar menu offers a traditional menu incorporating homemade dishes using fresh local produce wherever possible. Not forgetting our very popular Sunday carvery and sizzling steak nights. It is the ideal place to stay for business, a holiday or a short break in Cornwall. Visiting Cornwall? Think the Griffin in Newquay. Need a drone? Or a smaller drone? Or a bigger drone? Or maybe a battery, memory card, bag or merch? Or whatever these are? To help you get shots like this. This. Or even this. Or you can even win £2,500 to spend in store or online in our monthly competition for only £2 per entry. Get everything you need at hobbymounts.co.uk Have you been to Bodmin Jail? Immerse yourself in the history and atmosphere of the former county prison. Spend the night in jail with our resident medium. Visit the tea room. Dine in the Governor's Hall and experience our fine cuisine or why not sample our delicious Sunday lunch. So much going on. Wednesday, ghost walks. Thursday, scary cinema night. Friday and Saturday, after dark experience. Weddings and daily heritage tours. Bob in jail. So much more than an attraction. Well, welcome back to the second part of the programme. Indeed. So here we're going to go and take a look down at St Austral Brewery. We've got to see behind the scenes on how they brew their beer down there. Mm -hmm. uh, we went down and had a look at their small batch brewery, actually. Don't Indeed. And Grant Coles down there, one of the um, part of the brewing team, was looking after us Indeed, and showing us around. And uh, it's, it's great to see, actually, behind the scenes how it's made, as opposed to just because there's so many different places you can go and have one of their ales in Cornwall. Mm. It was just nice to be able to go and see that behind the scenes bit, really. Definitely. And we've got a bit of special treatment. So uh, take a look at this. So if you enjoy a glass of beer, then you're going to love our feature here from St. Austell Brewery. We've popped down to see one of the biggest and most successful family brewers in Cornwall. We're going to have a word with Roy just behind me and find out a little bit more. So this is Roy Rickard, an absolute legend in these parts, I would say. Now, Roy, you've been doing the brewery tours here for quite some time. How long? Uh, I first put foot on this site approximately 40 years ago. And you must have seen some changes in four years. I have indeed, yes. It's still a very good firm to work for. Uh, it still is a, a Cornish independent family business. Mm. Our executive director, which is Mr. James Staunton, as you probably know. I do. He is the great, great grandson of the gentleman who established the business in 1851, Walter Hicks. Well, I know that Tracy's waiting for me just in the visitor centre, yes. just in there, so I'm going to go and uh, speak to Tracy. That's good. Roy, thank you very much indeed. It's been a pleasure. And uh, we you. wish you well for the next 40 years at Sonostal Brewery. <laughs> thank you. Well, Tracy, a pleasure to meet you. Thank you very much for your time. Now, we're just speaking to Roy outside, and he was telling us about Walter Hicks founded the brewery. Mm -hmm. But what more can you tell us? Well, Walter Hicks actually started this, uh, all this back in 1851. Now, initially, he grew up as a farmer in the Sonostal area. And then in 1851, Walter decided to uh, branch out and became a maltster. Now, they think he was growing barley in his, uh, on his farm, and he decided to actually go a little bit further and change that barley into malt. Now, that was all the beginning of it, really, because the malt was the ones that were supplying all the local pubs. In 1863, Walter purchased his first pub, the Seven Stars Inn, so he decided to go a little bit further, and that was where he started actually making beer, in that little pub down in St. Austell Town. We still own that pub today. It was very, very busy. He continued to purchase pubs around the St. Austell area. Now, in 1893, about 30 years later, Walter built a second brewery, because we were that busy here in... Uh, it's an Austral brewery. He bought a second brewery, and that is the brewery that we're stood in today. So, 
So we're in the small batch brewery now here at St. Austin Brewery. I'm here with Grant Coles. And uh, Grant, talk us through the process of making beer here in Cornwall. Okay, so um, yeah, like we said, this is the uh, small batch brewery. This is our research and development uh, side, as well as um, where we produce beers for our small batch beer club, which is a, a small uh, 40 casks a week uh, operation. The small batch brewery mimics the process of the main brewery, but on a smaller scale, producing 40 casks per brew. These smaller runs allow specialist beers and research and development to be done at the brewery. The brewing process begins with milling of the malt, half of which is grown in Cornwall, and liqueur, which is water from a spring down the road in St Austell. This is added to the mash tun, where the starches are converted into sugars. This is then pumped to the copper, where the hops in pellet form are added. This is then boiled, longer for a more bitter flavour, or for a shorter time for a more aromatic flavour. This is then run over leaf hops in the hop back. Depending on the beers that's being brewed, this finishes the flavour profile. The beer is then sent to the fermenter, where the yeast is added. The combination of the yeast and sugars fermenting are what provides the beer with its alcohol content. It can stay here for up to a week depending on whether it's due to be casked, kegged or bottled. If the beer is due to be bottled, it's sent to the on-site bottling area. Here the bottles are filled, labelled, boxed and shipped. This smaller process in the small batch brewery is effectively the same as the larger brewery, but with everything done on a much larger scale, with beers being sent not only nationwide, but globally. Well, our thanks to everyone there at St Austin Brewery for making our trip there behind the scenes very enjoyable indeed. Yeah, and they were very kind as well to give us a couple of beers to try out on our live Facebook show, Tasting Cornwall. So make sure you check that out every Monday nights over on our Facebook page. Indeed, and if you can give us a quick like on our Facebook page and a subscribe on our YouTube channel, we'd very much appreciate it. Now, we've got some music for you now, the Backbeat Sound System. They played down at the Eden Project in 2017, supporting Madness. Mm -hmm. I think it was the year that Brian Adams was down there, and they've got a track out called Losing Faith. And uh, this is it, enjoy.
Our thanks to the Backbeat Sound System, an amazing track there by those guys. Yep, love a bit of reggae. Got another full pack show for you next week, but as we've mentioned in all show, if you are watching on either YouTube or Facebook, pop a comment below. Uh, if you want to chuck us a message on Twitter or Instagram, we're on all social media networks. Indeed, and over the next couple of weeks, we will be having our kitchen set Indeed, built. Excited we about have that. Um, been looked after there very much, mm -hmm. and we're looking forward to bringing you some cooking shows from our new studio kitchen. Indeed, so if you're a chef or you know of a chef who would like to get on set with us, uh, again, pop a comment below and we'll get in touch. Absolutely, that's it. Well, it's been another fantastic show. Great to be back with you. And uh, oh, Happy New Year, by the way. Indeed, 2019, yes. our first show on the new platform, Sky, Freesat, YouTube and Facebook Premier Live. Indeed. So if you want to catch up on more on what's going on throughout Cornwall, we'll see you next week. This programme has been in part funded by Visit Cornwall.